everyone and welcome back to my channel. Hope you are doing well. Can you believe we have entered into September? Time is passing right on by. Well, today in this video, I feel like we've got some yummy stuff for you. You've got new recipe or two, some tried and trues. Everything was just really delicious. Quick and easy to get to the table, but full of flavor. I hope you'll get some meal inspiration today by watching some of the things that we've had to eat around here. And without further ado, we will get right on into the video. Hello everyone. Tonight I am making no peak chicken and rice in my this is a um, Le Creuset, my wonderful Goodwill find several years ago for $4.99. It's like $72 on the website. I am putting in one cup of rice. I am putting in one cup of chicken broth. Next, I'm adding in one can of cream of mushroom soup. You can use any cream of soup that your heart desires. I'm actually cutting this recipe in half because James and I do not need the whole full 9 by 13 size. That one calls for two cans of cream of. So I've seen recipes with one cream of chicken, one cream of mushroom, or maybe one of those with a can of cream of celery. Sounds like to me just about anything would work. This would be my first time to make this, and I just think this sounds really good. I am using the recipe from the Plain Chicken website. I'll have that linked below. Okay, now I'm just gonna top this with my chicken, and one more thing. All right, next up comes the chicken. This is actually just one boneless skinless chicken breast cut up and that'll be plenty for what James and I need for dinner and we will have leftovers out of this I'm pretty positive all right those are in and then you come in with this beefy onion or you can just use the onion either way for the full recipe it takes a whole pack and then I'm just going to use half of this to go over my, my chicken breast here. So, looks good and mixed. About half a package on top. Oh, well, I used almost the whole thing, so I'm going to add the rest of it in. <laughs> Never mind about all that I just said. All right, I think it'll be just fine. Next, you cover this, and you're not supposed to uncover it, bake it for the full time, which is, I think it says an hour to an hour, 15 minutes, something like that. I'll check mine a little bit sooner because I have half the rice, half all the ingredients, minus this topping, of course, now that we um, put all of that in, but I will check this maybe about 45 minutes, possibly, and kind of see what it's looking like. I'm excited to try this. Okay, you guys, this is 45 minutes in. It's the moment of truth. And I don't know if I told you guys I was making no-bake chicken. That's what I told my husband I was making. Woo! Oh, my. This looks good. It is definitely not no-bake chicken. It's no-peak chicken. All right, I'm going to check the temperature of the chicken plus see if the rice is done. But I'm thinking this may be done. We'll see. Well, the chicken is way done, so that's a good thing. Okay, now let's see if the rice is tender. Like I said, the original recipe said an hour and 15 to an hour and 30 minutes. This is a half, kind of a half portion, so I started with 45. Wow, it looks like it's done. Let's see here. Oh, yeah, it's done. I'd say just done. So I wouldn't go any less than 45 minutes in my opinion. Oh wow. 
This is gonna be good. My green beans are finishing on the stove, so I'm just gonna cover this back up. I'm gonna just kinda sit here and rest for a few minutes. I think this is gonna be really good. This was a delicious meal. It could not get much easier than putting it all in the pan and in the oven. I'll make this one again for sure. If you haven't tried it, you might want to give it a try. If you do make the half portion, just be careful with that um, beefy onion soup. It is pretty salty. Um, half would have been plenty. You could probably even mix it in the rice mixture, I would say. But again, if you haven't tried it, give it a try. I know I will make this one again. Next up is family night. I am showing you here, I have put together a big batch of taco salad. I'm putting it together. And this makes such a large portion, I didn't really have a bowl big enough that I could really get everything stirred and incorporated. So I split it into two bowls. I always get a lot of questions about this bowl. It's so pretty, in it? It came from a store called Mardell's in Oklahoma. It was gifted to me by my son and daughter-in-law. And um, it's kind of a branch off Hobby Lobby. So I can't link it or anything like that, but I always get a lot of questions about it. All right, I'm going to split this can of Brooks Mild Chili Beans in between these two bowls. What I have in here for the base is lettuce, tomato, various colored peppers that you see chopped up there. Um, you can put whatever you want in your taco salad, of course. But this is what I have in mind. And I'm going in with these beans. This is a really... Um, important component in this particular taco salad recipe. These beans provide so much flavor and you never want to drain off the liquid on a chili bean. That is part of what makes them so great is because they are already seasoned um, for your recipe. So I have those split in between these two bowls. And like I said, I'm just making one recipe of this, but it's just a lot, so I just had to split it. All right, now this may strange seem like a strange thing to use, this Italian dressing, but it is so good. The original recipe that my mom used to make called for Catalina dressing, and I love that one as well. I've had it with ranch dressing, and that's really good. But something about this Italian dressing, it's really kind of wangy and um just, I don't know, the flavor blends really well with all the other things in this taco salad. So if you haven't tried it, definitely give it a try. So you just want to get everything incorporated really well. This was earlier in the day, so I went ahead and pulled all of this together. And right before we ate, I put in the final two ingredients. So here in my pan, I have browned up one pound of ground beef. And I'm just seasoning that like I would for tacos, or you can just use an envelope of taco seasoning if you have that. I usually just use my own seasoning. So garlic powder, cumin, salt, pepper, anything like that. Chili powder, onion powder, which I forgot the chili powder till after I had stirred this together and I remembered and put that in. So you just want to season up your ground beef however you want it for tacos. And then close to time for serving, I put that in because I like it to kind of, you know, still be a little bit warm. And then you're going to add in your cheese and your Doritos or your Fritos, whatever kind of crunchy component you want in this taco salad. Next up, I am also serving for family night. I'm kind of making like a sandwich bar, um, all the yummy things to make a really delicious sandwich. So I'm slicing up these Garden Fresh um, Roma tomatoes. These were so good. And I just pulled together all the things that we would want on a sandwich. I bought some really yummy bread. I think it's called Nothing, no, Everything Bagel Seasoned, I think. Um, that was really good. I had just some plain white bread, various kinds of lunch meat and cheeses. And everyone just kind of made whatever sandwich they were hungry for. And it was really, really good. It, this was a week that was really, really hot. So I thought the taco salad and the sandwich would be great. Look at the size of this onion. This came from our son Gunnar and Abigail's garden. It's like softball size. Um, they had some a really good turnout of, from their garden this year. So I'm going to get the rest of this pulled together.
Now, if you've been around here long, I'm sure you know that we get, love a good sandwich around here, but this just takes it to another level. Just pulling out a tray or something of the sort and piling on and making things look pretty with all the meats and cheeses. So we have Eckridge garlic bologna and Eckridge old fashioned loaf. We have some honey ham, some sopressata, some salami, and I have a pepper Colby Jack and a Harvardi cheese. And then I have romaine and spinach. And just putting it on a tray like this, kind of arranging it nicely, you can't go wrong with that. And everyone can just build their own sandwich, have some fun breads, all the good toppings. I put out some pesto, mustard, Duke's mayonnaise, horseradish sauce, um, like I showed you the two different kinds of bread and you just can't go wrong This is an easy way to feed a crowd as well. And here's the taco salad coming together here uh, The gang's all here. You can probably see them in the background And so I waited till then to get the meat and the Doritos and the cheese all mixed in. This was so delicious And like I said, this was just a an easy meal um, to pull together and great for some of the hot weather that we had been having that week especially so this was a, a big hit everyone um, seemed to just enjoy it all and I want to show you these beautiful flowers Abigail grew these, these in their garden and Abigail is such a sweetie she made three arrangements and brought to us girls and we were just thinking that was such a sweet treat and one more cute thing, Fisher was so excited to show Gigi his laptop. Look how cute this is. I love the caption, no girls allowed laptop. And a tree house, oh, he wanted to show me all about that. How cute is that? All right, I'm going to show you real quick before we get to the rest of the meals, the dessert that I made for family night. If you've ever had the strawberry pretzel dessert, this is kind of like a deconstructed version of that. So you wanna melt a stick of butter. Into that, you're gonna add chopped pecans, chopped pretzels, and brown sugar. You give that a stir and bake it in the oven for about seven minutes. Take it out and let it cool. Meanwhile, to a softened cream cheese, you're gonna add granulated sugar and vanilla and mix that very, very well. You will then combine what you baked in the oven after it's cool. So you got your pretzel mixture. You're gonna come in with about two and a half to three cups of chopped strawberries. And you mix in about a tub and a half, 12 ounces or so of Cool Whip or Whip topping. Mix that together. And then I come in on the top with strawberries and I've made this again since then and I added some pecans to the top too. That way you kind of know what's in there. If someone doesn't know, they can say, hey, this has strawberries. This dessert is so absolutely delicious. I've made it a couple of times since then. Definitely give this a try. If you haven't, look below in the description box for the full recipe. It is so easy and so, so good. and welcome back to my kitchen today we're having the easiest of dinners and I'm making what sounded good today and that is chicken alfredo so I'm using this jarred classical alfredo I'm not making my own I measured this one up a little bit with some fresh parmesan I have a half a box of this cavatappi and I have this that I just took out of my freezer shredded chicken and James actually did this on the smoker not long ago it was a leg quarter so this is a thigh and leg meat and you know my future self or today self Angie thanks my past self for doing this um we just had a little bit extra that day we didn't eat it I took it all off the bone and put it in the freezer and today it'll be absolutely perfect for this real quick and easy Monday meal when I don't feel like doing a whole lot, but I sure am thinking chicken alfredo <laughs> sounds good. So that's what we're making today, guys. Okay, this is kind of a larger bowl. It's not real big. I just made a salad here. Sometimes I just make it on our plates, just a small portion of salad for James and me, but I just went ahead and put it in this bowl and I'm gonna put it in the fridge. Um, it'll be, we'll probably eat this all for dinner, half and half. We'll split it. I just wanted to say the uh, last week's video, I showed a 
quote unquote Greek salad. It's just a Greek inspired salad and it was so good. And James loves those so much. I kind of forget to make them, but I still had some feta, had all the stuff for salad, of course. And so I just threw another one here for us together. And um, I've got these organic green olives. They have the pit in them, so I have to, you know, just take them off the pit. Those are down under there. So, so good. Let me show you the dressing I'm gonna use. I used this one. It says new up here on the packaging. Um, I used this last week and a couple recipes too. It is really delicious. So if you see this one, pick it up. If you think you'd like this uh, flavor, it is a really, really good one. It's full of all kinds of um, good stuff in there. So I'm gonna put this over the salad and get it in the fridge. So I've got in my jar of Alfredo sauce, my chicken, my pasta's cooked. I'm gonna add in a little bit of heavy cream, not much. I'm gonna go in with black pepper. I'm gonna put in just a little bit of butter, about two tablespoons. I'm gonna shake in a little bit of these Parmesan shaved, uh, shaved parm. And I'm gonna use a little bit of this caramelized onion butter. That's gonna be my little concoction. Okay, I had two hot dog buns left over that we didn't use with hot dogs. So I just buttered those up, put some garlic powder and some parsley, cooking those up here on the stove for our easy peasy garlic bread. Got my lid on here. Yum, look at that. Oh, it's gonna be so good. Here it is. Doesn't this look so, so good? I think it's really gonna be tasty. It was quick, super quick, so that's a bonus. The salad looks so fresh. Oh, looks really, really good. Now these last couple meals were our easier ones for the week. If you see this breakfast pizza at Aldi, pick it up. It is so good. I love it when they bring this one into the store about once or twice a year and I get one. So it's got a biscuit type crust with some gravy on there, sausage. I added the um, uh, bacon bits there myself. Just bake it according to the package directions. It crisps up so nice. And then I just made some scrambled eggs to go on the side and some tater tots. And it was an absolutely delicious meal. We really, really love this breakfast pizza from Aldi. And this just maybe a quick dinner, um, a convenience type dinner, but it did not disappoint in any way, shape or form. This was really, really good. And another quick meal that we had this week was the Pioneer Woman Sloppy Joes. I've been wanting to make these for quite some time and just hadn't gotten around to it. So I made them tonight, served them with pickles and uh, tater tots were our side. We didn't have these two back to back, but um, I like to serve tater tots with Sloppy Joes as well. That is it, you guys. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you got some good inspiration. Give it a big thumbs up if you did. If you haven't subscribed, I'd sure love to have you around here. Hit that subscribe button. And I'll see you the next time. Good Lord willing and the creek don't rise.